Hello there, and welcome back to Steam It with Steve. Today, we're going to keep going on with our coding bat Python experience, and we're going to learn about string two. So let's jump straight on in. So here's coding bats options. We click on string two. These are going to have a few little more trickier things inside of it. So let's have a go here. This extends on what we've done with string one. So given a string, return a string where every char in the original, um, there are two chars. So basically every character in the original, there's now going to be two characters. So the becomes T T H H E E A A B B becomes A A A B B B B and then hi there you can see that mess there <laughs> so um we're just going to do just a straight loop um let's go through it so for x in str so that will literally get each individual character and we want to have an output string first so so we'll go output equals double quotes for x in string or str, output equals x, sorry, plus equals x plus x. Right, so that should just literally take the character, add on the another version of the character, put on the output, and then we have it there. So let's see what happens when we return that output. Cool. Um, just for the lols, let's see if this works. If we times that by two, Pretty sure that should work as well. Awesome. Okay, so what happens is we have the output string, went through every single character inside the string, appended it to the output, but two of them, and then returned the output once it's done. Let's see what they said for a hint. Okay, so they did it instead. They did the range. So another way that you could have done this in range of the length of the string. So for every single element inside the string, would be the string at x times two. Didn't like that. What didn't you like? I'll close the brackets, sorry. Cool, so that works as well. So that's another way that you can iterate through a string. Next one, return the number of times that the string high appears anywhere in a given string. So, um, there was one there, there was two there, and two there. So we're going to have a count variable. I'm going to set that to zero. And we want to go through this the whole string. So we're going to use for x in range. We're going to do that because it's it's going to, we're looking for substrings now. So the range of the length of the string. But this time we actually want to take one off the tail because when we're looking for, instead of a single character, we're looking for two characters. So we want the, it to go one in on length of the string. So if at str x is equal to h and str at x plus one is equal to i, then we just return, ah, so we add one to count. So we'll go count plus equal to one. And then if that happens, we then just return the count. Nine, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, something wrong there. Ah, double equals. Cool, so do you see how I error handled that? Went line six, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's the problem. Cool, all good. Done, next one. Cat, dog, return true if the string cat and dog appears the same amount of times in a given string. So cat, dog was true, cat, cat, false, cat, cat dog is true because there's a cat and then there's a dog there so we want to basically count how many cats and how many dogs there are um so we would have a cat count is equal to zero and then a dog count is equal to zero and then we're going to go through the string again so 4x in range of st uh the length of the string and then if str from x to x plus three. So we actually don't want this to go all the way to the end. We want it to go minus three. It's equal to cat. Snakey bite cat count plus equal to one. So we add one to the cat count. So in this case here, it's gone through every single elements inside of the, um, the list, but then we've taken back three 
Um, sorry, that should only be back two. And yeah, that should add up the cat count. And then we want to do the same with that again, but we want to do that with the dog now. So if SDR X to X plus three, close brackets is equal to dog, quotation mark, dog count, plus equal one. And then after it's done all that, it should have all the counts. So then we just return dog count is equal to cat count. So if they're equal, it will return true. If they're not equal, it should return false. Cool. So trick with this, um, it's gone back two. So we want to go from the end of the array back in two characters so that it would start if the D was there. So see, it would be there. That's where we wanted to count from. And then we need to add on three because it needs to, um, the cut happens at the third one. So this would compare the C, the A, and then the T. So the zero, the one, and the second, but not the third. So X plus three is where the cut actually happens. Cool. Next one. Count code. Return the number of times that the string code appears anywhere in a given string, except we'll accept any letter D. So cope. Um, for the letter D. So you don't need to do the third character. So cope and co also count. Awesome. So we're going to do a count. So we go count is equal to zero. And we're going to go through the string. So for X in range of the length of the string. And this time we're going back three. We don't go all the way to the end, otherwise we'll have an overflow. And then if str at x is equal to c and str at x plus 1 is equal to o and str square bracket x plus 3 is equal to E. Let's make you buy it. Um, count, we add on. So we go count plus equal to one. Then after that, all that, we just return the count. Five, seven, plus equal, sorry. Cool. So we had a variable called count, made that equal to zero. We ran through the whole string, but we've gone three back because code has four letters. So we need to go from the um, fourth letter in, which would be three back to start there. We then check to see if that particular letter, is, the first is C, the next one is O. And then we've checked, we skipped the second one because it doesn't matter. It could be, the D could be anything. And then we have the E at the end. Cool, next one. Given two strings, return true if either string appears at the end of the other string. Ignore upper and lower case differences. In other words, computation should not be case sensitive. Note ds dot lower returns the lower case version of the string. So we've got high ABC comma ABC, and then we have ABC high ABC. Okay, let's think this through. So let's look, change it first. So we'll go A is equal to A dot lower quotation marks b equals b dot lower so we now have that we now want to work out which one's the biggest out of them so we'll go if the length of a is less than the length of b snaky byte um smallest equals a biggest equals B else um, smallest equals B biggest equals A. Yeah, so that, that basically is taking the two strings and now we now have the smallest and the biggest. We could then do it all in one big statement. So let's just literally go from here. We'll go return. Um, the smallest double equals 
the biggest and we want to come back in a certain amount, which is the length of the smallest. So we'll go minus the length of the smallest. Snakey bite, close the bracket. And yeah, we'll see how that goes. 113. Oh, one more bracket there. Sorry, it was in the negative of all that. Cool. So that's basically gone through. Check the biggest and the smallest. It then reduces the length of the smallest. So it brings it back to the starting point of where, how far back in the smallest is. And that's just pretty cool. What's the hint? Huh, okay. Um, yeah, right. So you can just do S1 dot ends with S2. So instead of all that, here's an <laughs> heaps easier way. Um, return A dot ends with B or B dot ends with A. <laughs> Same thing. So you could have done it that way or you could have done it my longer way, but both work. Cool. Next one. X, Y, Z there. Return true if a string contains the, any appearance of X, Y, Z where X, Y, Z is not directly preceded by the dot. So X, X, Y, Z counts, but X dot X, Y, Z does not. So A, B, C, X, Y, Z is true. A, B, C dot X, Y, Z is false. X, Y, Z dot A, B, C is true. So there's going to be one at the start. Um, so you're going to want to check if the start has an X, Y, Z. So if the string from zero to three, that equals X, Y, Z, you're all good. We're going to return true. All right. We then want to iterate through that whole string. So we want to check each of the individual characters, but if the one before it has a dot, it's returning false. So, because of that, we've checked the base case at the beginning, so we can actually shift this all one in, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a for loop, so for x in range of the length of SDR. And then what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna, actually, no, sorry, range, we're gonna start at one comma, the length of SDR. And then we wanna bring it back two so two characters in. So it's going to start from the array. Instead of starting at zero, it's going to start at one. Instead of going all the way to the end, it's going to come back in two because X, Y, Z for the Y and the Z would just be in those last two positions. So then we do a snaky byte. And then if STR from X to X, so we want to do the first one, second one, so plus three. If that equals, so double equals X, Y, Z, it's all good. And we want to check that. Um, what do we want to check? That there is no dot before it. So because we've shipped everything one across here by using the one, we can now do STR X minus one. So if that does not exclamation mark equal a dot in quotation marks. So if both, if that's all true, right, we can then return true. Yeah. And then if it exits that loop, we just return false. Let's go. Cool. So it's gone through, it's checked whether or not it says equal to X, Y, Z. If that's true, we're all good. If not, then it goes through this loop, which starts at one and goes through all the way to two positions before the end. It then checks to see, so it checks to see if the substring, so from X, um, so the zeroth, the oneth, and the two, so two positions across, that X plus three is where the cut occurs. So then we check to see if that equals X plus Y, X, Y, Z, and then string um, X minus one. So the string, the character that's before where we're currently at, if that equals a dot, that's bad, but if it doesn't equal a dot, we're all good. So then we we'll return true. Otherwise, we will return a false. Another way that you could have written this is you could have gone 
equals and then say not. So not of this, and that should work as well. But I when we're doing comparisons, it's probably better to use that rather than doing the not of it all at the end. Cool. That's it. Done and dusted. So if you have any questions, please put them in the comments down below. Um, hope you've enjoyed that. That's um, getting a little bit trickier, but this is towards the end of your Python um, encoding combat, uh, coding bat. So have a practice, try and do as many of these as possible because the more you do, the better you will become. It's like learning your times tables. First time you learned seven times five, you probably freaked out. All right, but now you just know it's 35. Same with this, the more you practice them, the more that you understand how an if statement looks, how a for loop looks and where to put them in because you practice them in more critical thinking scenarios. So don't forget to like and subscribe down below because it helps with our YouTube algorithm. And see you next time on Steam It With Steve. Adios.